That was my calling card, was this flop. I walked around Hollywood with a flop. Okay. Hello, my name is Jason David Boyd. I'm here with Ken Sanders, and we're going to talk a little bit about reinventing ourselves. That's something I'm a little bit familiar with. I'm trying to uh, reinvent myself as either a writer or a director coming from the world of acting, and I don't exactly know um, how to do that. I understand you've had to reinvent yourself um, a couple of times. Could you tell me a little bit more about that? Uh, sure, I'd be happy to do that. Mm -hmm. um, when I graduated from college, uh, I got it in my head I was going to produce a feature film. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I actually wrote uh, a film uh, with a friend of mine named Tucker Johnston, a little horror movie, which was called ultimately Blood Salvage. And uh, went to, uh, back to uh, Georgia, my home state, and I raised independent funds to make this film. Mm -hmm and uh, spent, uh, I would say, a good uh, two years of my life raising money and then ultimately making the film. Probably spent another year in post-production. I mean, the, 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 already you can imagine all the things that were going wrong that mm -hmm. this took so long, but it was my first production and this was my, this was my trial by fire and my learning experience, you know. But I made this feature film. It actually did get a theatrical release, a, mm -hmm. very, a very small one. That's more than most people can say about their first feature. Well, well, it, it, it did, but, but the, the, the peril with that theatrical release was is that it didn't do very well. Mm. Uh, it came and it went, and so to the extent that anyone even noticed the film, uh, what they noticed was it was a flop. <laughs> Oh. So I, I managed to get a film made. Mm -hmm. I managed to produce the movie. I, you know, co-wrote the script and uh, did what I wanted to do. But uh, at the end of it, I had a flop. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, that was my calling card: was this flop. I walked around Hollywood with a flop. Okay, but I still managed to uh, uh, go out and pitch projects. And I had it in my head I was going to produce another one, be Mr. Independent Producer, and uh, and so I remembered going to. Pitch meeting after pitch meeting, I'd go to a studio, I'd go to a small company, I'd go to a large company, I'd go to a network, and I kept pitching things, and I'd be sitting across the desk from an executive who would usually be my age, mm -hmm. and, uh, and, I would, uh, and the executive would nod and would smile, and every time that executive was nodding and smiling, he or she was thinking, you produced a flop. <laughs> so I never got anywhere doing this, mm -hmm. uh, and I realized this after you know two or three years of having that same meeting over and over again, and then I really began to ask myself, why am I sitting on this side of the desk? Why can't I sit on that side of the desk? Mm -hmm. I want to be the one sitting there nodding and smiling, <laughs> and you know potentially be the one who could say yes. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, so uh, I'm going to start over. That's, that's how I looked at it. How do I start over? I'm going to start over. And so how do I become an executive? That became my, the burning question in my life. Now, the, becoming an executive was, was merely a step toward becoming a producer. But uh, I decided to become a, a freelance script reader and to offer my services to as many executives mm -hmm. as I possibly could with the goal of getting on the inside and getting getting someone to to like my work mm -hmm. and uh, and to ultimately think about hiring me as a low level executive and let me enter that uh, that uh, food chain and start going up the ladder on the, on the executive ladder and uh, I did the the uh, freelance script reading thing for probably uh, a year or so and then I finally did at one of the companies I was reading for they finally did have an opening when in fact the executive that I was giving uh, coverage to uh, told me in confidence one day, uh, you know, uh, I'm going to be leaving this company. Uh, they might want to hire you to do my job. And I thought, hmm, yeah, <laughs> that would be nice. Anyway, that, you know, so I, that's, that's how I did it. Mm -hmm. and, and once I became an executive, uh, you know, that defined the next several years of my life because I was able to take that and parlay that into what I wanted to do. But I had to start over. I was a guy who had produced a movie, mm -hmm. but when I was around, but when I went around marketing myself as a script reader, I never told anybody I'd produced a movie or written a movie. Right. I just said, I'm a script reader. Mm -hmm. And luckily, you know, I had the skills to do that. So, so I actually, uh, you know, could be a benefit to those companies. Uh, but... That was starting over. So your kind of pathway that you had taken to sum it up 
is, is rather than trying to correct a mistake, like, oh, I made this, I made this film, and oh, please look at it, but, but don't judge it too harshly, and I know I could do better, was to essentially start from the ground up, not even saying, hey, forgive my mistakes, but just pretending that they weren't even there. Mm -hmm. But it required you, I guess, to take a completely divergent path from what you had originally uh, set out to do. If you, at one point, decided that you wanted to do films again, uh, th this is as you as an executive, wanted to make films again, w was there any fear that Blood Salvage would come back and somebody says, oh, he wants to make a film. He's never done that before, has he? And then somebody looks into it and says, oh, what's well, this? Well, it wasn't that big of a secret. Okay. You know? I mean, the, the fact that I'd made this film uh, uh, d did not haunt me as an executive. Okay. Uh, uh, you know, uh, I, I think m most people, uh, many of the people, not all, but many of the people who I worked with knew that I had made a film. Mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, and, and by this point, the film, it's a few years later, you know, uh, the, the film was kind of forgotten anyway. But I didn't, I didn't trumpet it. You know, I, did, I didn't say, hey, I'm a, hey, I'm a film producer. Mm -hmm. I want to work as a script reader for you. Because if I had said that, uh, I think that people wouldn't, would not have wanted to hire me as a, as a script reader. Mm -hmm. You know, they don't want somebody that, that they think is, you know, has another agenda except to be the thing they need you to be. Right. And that's in any position, by the way. Uh, you know, uh, you go, if you go on a set and you're, you're a production assistant on a set and you spend the whole day on the set telling everybody, I'm really a film director, <laughs> right? There's nothing sort of more annoying right. than that person not doing their job and telling you they actually want you know, your job or whatever. What I really so, want to do is direct. That's, that's right. So you, you, uh, so, you know, you don't do that. You, mm -hmm. you tell them, I'm the thing you want me to be, and then you be that thing, and then you be great at it. And, and that's just the way you got to do it. Uh, but, I, but, you know, that, that was one of the key moments in my life when I reinvented myself. And, I, you, know, I did it, I, you know, I've done it since. But uh, that, uh, that, that, was, uh, that was the moment where it clicked. I remember sitting in a pitch meeting and going, I'm never going to sit in another pitch meeting on this side of the desk. I'm going to be on that side of the desk the next time. Got it. All right. I'd like to talk to you a little bit more about this uh, when we come back for our next segment. Okay. Thank you.